in the last two episodes, we created a storyboard followed by the character design process for the people in the storyboard. And today it's time for the 3D modeling part. We will talk about this process and what has been happening over the past two months. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to episode three of creating animations from scratch. So today I need to embrace the 3D modeling. I've actually already started a little bit, just like in the mouth and think of how I will do it. And hopefully I can finish this in two days of work. If not, I will do another episode of 3D modeling. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so for this I'm using a reference, because this is super important, you know, to have the form of the mouth like this and stuff like that. Uh, normally, and some people do like a sculpture, I'm doing it with quads only. So, first I started with the mouth and eyes, creating a sort of mask-like structure with circular loops, just like we saw in the reference. One of the rules of these characters is that everything needs to be in quads, meaning the mesh is made of squares, avoiding triangles or any other messy geometry. This mask-like design ensures that the face deforms smoothly during animation, which is essential for creating realistic expressions. For animated and gaming projects, having a clean mesh that doesn't look like a spider's web is absolutely critical. There are a lot of people who learn how to create characters using sculpting techniques, which is great for certain purposes, but here's the issue. They often sell these scopes as if they are ready for animation and they forget the topology. Then to make matters worse, they try to rig these poorly constructed meshes, resulting in stiff robotic animations that just don't work. So there's a lot of times when clients come up to us with a character already rigged and they just want us to animate it. If you don't explain to the client, hey, this mesh is looking horrible, the person that did this obviously didn't know this was for animation because now it can be useful for the purpose of animation or gaming. You always need to explain this because then what will happen is that they will think that it's your fault that the animation is bad or with a bad quality when the problem, the core problem was the mesh, the topology. This has happened a lot of times, so I'm just talking from experience. So remember, if you ever order a 3D character animation, make sure the mesh doesn't look like a spider's web. A good mesh is key for smooth and natural animations.
stop recording. I decided to get a bit crazy in a good way though. First, it was my birthday. My family surprised me by coming to visit, which was amazing, but also meant we were going out a lot. But that wasn't all. I got caught up creating ebooks, writing email campaigns, and building some landing pages to help grow the business. Plus, I started taking MBA classes to level up my skills, which took a chunk of time too. Now, let's talk about what's coming up. I'm back on track, and you can expect these videos drop every Monday, but that's not all. I'm adding two new series to the channel, so you can see more about what I do in the creative space. The first new series will be all about content creation for Blab Studios, I will show you behind the scenes as I create animations, designs, and campaigns that push the studio forward. The second series is something a little different but close to my heart. I'm working on finishing an old painting project and I'll be documenting that process too. So stick around because there's going to be a lot more content coming your way. Okay guys, yesterday I spent like two hours uh, finishing up this because I just left this project on the dust but I already finished the head, that's amazing. So the next episode of this series will be finishing up the body and why not maybe the materials, the colors and then we will need to start doing the rigging or the other characters, I don't know. but. This will be a long ride, so stay tuned for more. Bye.